Hey there, welcome back. This is Felix from Goldhammer Vintage Watches. Believe it or not, but the Rolex Daytona wasn't always a box office hit. There was a time when this piece collected dust in the watch stores. Nowadays, the Daytona is one of the most famous and exclusive watches in the world. Join us today as we take a look at the history of this almost 60-year-old icon and learn about the piece's milestones. Let's start with a quick reference overview before we go in depth. In its more than a half century history, the Daytona has seen three different series. Series 1 is the original Cosmograph Daytona and has itself gone through three different series. The original series was produced in very small numbers from 1963 until the 1980s. These watches have a four-digit model number and feature a hand-wound movement. The second series, our today's piece, the so-called Venice Daytona, was introduced in 1988 with an automatic movement. These watches have a five-digit number and were produced until 2000. In 2000, Rolex began the production of a third Daytona series, with a movement made in-house and a six-digit model number. These watches were self-winding and have chronograph functions. However, Rolex was manufacturing watches with chronograph complications for several decades before the Daytona name became a mainstay in their catalog. So let's start our today's journey with the so-called pre-Daytonas. In the beginning, there was nothing. At least there were no chronographs from Rolex. This changed in the 1930s when Rolex produced the first chronographs specially designed for racing drivers, although not yet officially under the name Daytona. Everything has a beginning. And for the Daytona, that beginning took place on the beach of the same name in Florida. At the time, the road surfaces were still in very bad condition and this 35 km long and hard sandy beach of Daytona was perfect to break speed records. The race for speed reached its peak when the British Sir Malcolm Campbell sets a speed record of 445 km per hour in 1935 with his car called Bluebird. A telegram from Mr. Campbell testifies to the quality and functionality of Rolex chronographs in 1935. Rolex watch worn during record attempt and still going splendidly, notwithstanding rough usage received. These early Rolex chronographs were sold half-heartedly and in not particular waterproof cases with foreign movements. At the time, the company was not interested in developing a chronograph. Competition for chronographs was strong, and others like Nongine and Omega had been on the market much longer. Nevertheless, between 1955 and 1961, Rolex chronographs could be found in the displays of various retailers. About 500 of these pieces left Rolex workshop each year. Unfortunately, the nearly $200 timepieces sold slowly as competing models like the Hoya Carrera dominated the market. Nevertheless, today the so-called pre-Daytonas are highly sought after among collectors. They did not bear the name Daytona, but a simple chronograph on their dial. Today the rare timepieces with black or silver dial in stainless steel cases are traded from around $20,000. But before the success story of the Daytona began, Rolex was better known for the waterproof three-hand models, Datejust, Dayday, Submarine and GMT Master. What many people don't know is that the Daytona had to fight hard for its leading position in the Rolex family. So next we're going to talk about Daytona's path to success. Yeah, we can say from a storekeeper to a legend. The first reason is based in 1962, when the Swiss watch manufacturer became the official timekeeper of the prestigious race at already mentioned Daytona International Speedway. As a sign for this direct connection, the first Rolex chronograph officially appeared in 1963 under the name Rolex Daytona with a four-digit reference number 6239. For optimal readability in extreme situations, the tachymeter scale on the bezel was particularly large. Winners of the Daytona Beach Race were henceforth allowed to carry home a Daytona in addition to the victory trophy. Interesting to know here is that the watch did not receive the official designation Rolex Daytona until 1967. But even this image-boosting name could not compensate for the disadvantage of manual winding and the demand keeps a low level at this time. The second important fact for the piece's fame is Paul Newman, a name that in today's watch world is known to everyone. The American actor and film star wore a Daytona at the end of the 1960s, among other things in the popular film Indianapolis Risking Life and Death. He was a passionate racing driver in his private life and the star with the blue eyes was often photographed with a Rolex Daytona on his wrist. Although he was never an official Rolex ambassador, the models he wore were given the unofficial name Paul Newman Daytona. Today they are among the most sought after collector's watches. A characteristic feature of a Paul Newman is that subdials and minute tracks bear the same contrasting color. In 2017, 
Philips Auction House in New York sold Paul Newman's original Rolex Daytona, which he received from his wife Joanne Woodward at the start of his racing career, for 17.75 million US dollars. The next milestone of our today's video is the production of the Daytona's first automatic movement. The first series Daytonas were equipped with a hand-wound by U72 movement, which Rolex had improved with its own chuck protection. Later they worked with mass-produced movements, such as the Bayou 7750 or the Lemania 1341 caliber. These movements did not match with Rolex's strong quality philosophy. However, many manufacturers offered more convenient automatic chronographs or chronographs with quartz movements. So, and again, the hand-wound Rolex Daytonas were increasingly gathering dust in the jewelry's display. Unbelievable nowadays, but there are stories from that time of customers who wanted to buy day dates from a special production but had to buy Daytonas to sweeten the AD's books. But Rolex was very quick to respond to market developments. Starting in 1988, the Rolex Daytona was further developed into an automatic watch with a Zenith El Primero movement. This legendary movement has been built almost unchanged since 1969. The Swiss manufacturer did modify the movement according to its own ideas, had it certified as a chronometer and henceforth called it Caliber 4030. The Rolex Daytona, as we know it today, was born. Like our today's piece, the two-tone five-digit reference 16523 from 1997. It received the rings around the subdials that are still common today and the case was enlarged from 36 to 40 mm. The demand for self-winding Daytona was so great that deliveries were limited to a few watches per AD. In 1988, for example, watch collectors paid the equivalent of over $2,500 for a Rolex Daytona Cosmograph, which until then had been less sought after. So the market seemed to be ready. From then on, watch fans sometimes had to wait years for their Rolex Daytona and prices went up. Thus, the Rolex Daytona myth was born. Last but not least, let's talk about the own manufacturer movement for the Rolex Daytona. In 2000, Rolex's own 4130 manufacture movement replaced the modified Venice El Primero. The new reference 116520 came with elegant silver rim totalizers, a solid oyster lock bracelet and a buckle milled from a block of steel. The small seconds of the new Daytona was moved from 9 to 6 o'clock. Superlative chronometer. Rolex's own certification indicates the precision of a watch and goes even beyond the COSC certificate. Of course, they have much more to say about the models from 2000 onwards, but as always, we would like to limit ourselves to the vintage period of the watches. So, that's all for today. Have a great day and hope to see you in our next video.